I'm going to be eating some soft shell crawfish today. Mmm, so good. But before I eat these crawfish, let's clean up the shed a little bit and check on my squirrel traps. Mmm, so good. <laughs> I heard a squirrel get trapped. <laughs> Let's check it out. So I have two of them set up. I have one set up over here and one behind the shed. Let's check this one first. <laughs> there you go. You can see that it's closed and I can hear it rustling around too. All right, let's look. Oh, there you go. <laughs> we caught a squirrel, y'all. Let's check on the other one. All right, <laughs> I'm excited. Ooh, this one's closed also. Is there anything in there? I think there is. Oh yes, yep, got another squirrel here. Oh, all right, there you go. <laughs> all right, so we are gonna put it next to the other one. There you go. Got myself two squirrels. Right, let's take a look at them. So it wouldn't be a good idea to eat these squirrels because we haven't had our first frost yet. Typically it's ideal to wait until the first frost. So like temperatures would hit roughly around like the 32 degree mark. That way it's to prevent like possible parasites and stuff like that. But here's a closer shot of them. Let's see if they would stay still. These squirrels are considered pests in my neighborhood and I can legally just pretty much dispatch them. I have several options actually. So one option is to relocate them and I don't have time to do that. And it just wouldn't make sense to just bring two large things like this, you know, um, and then relocate them somewhere. It'd be actually best to like take them and put them in one container, but I don't want to do that either. I don't want to handle these. And so, yeah, I am going to just shoot them and then toss them. But I won't show that on video because this video isn't about like eating squirrels or anything like that or processing them. I'm just getting rid of them. What I am doing today though, is I'm just going to get rid of all the trash that's around here right now. And I'm going to pull this thing out and take a closer look at it and see what I could do. So like it is just filthy and it's gross because it's just been left out essentially. And it's just full, filled with like a bunch of stuff. And uh, all that black that you see is liquid. Um, I think there is acorns in there too. So that's why it's black, but I'm not really sure. But yeah, it's, it's pretty filthy. And I want to see if I can manage to salvage this uh, heat lamp. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, I am going to take care of these squirrels real quick and I'll be right back. I'm not sure if you're able to see it. There's a squirrel up there. I kind of want to shoot it, but my vision's a little bit bad and it's not moving around enough now. I did not see that earlier. I'm not sure if that just happened or, or what, but like you see that right there, that's my hot pot or no, it's not my hot pot. It's my, it's my slow cooker pot. It was right there over that hole and the squirrels must have came by and pushed it down. So yeah, there was a, a squirrel that came down to steal like some of the peanuts from these guys. And then it ran up the tree. I don't see any more though. All right, well, I'm gonna take these out. I'm using this right now. It's my Crossman Magfire Mission. It's a brake barrel uh, piston rifle. So it has like a, a nitro piston that's in here. So I just pump it once and then it also cocks it also. There's this magazine. So I am going to aim and shoot pretty quick so from here I just break it down like this that's how I pump it and break it back up and it's ready I can shoot the other one now all done there you go I could like skin them and use like the pelt and stuff like that but I don't really need to, like these are really small anyways. So yeah, I'm just going to toss them and I'm gonna set up the traps again too. So I'm gonna set up peanut butter and everything here again. And then I'm gonna set up another one over there and see if I can catch two more tomorrow. 
I can see the squirrel's footprints all over this table. And there's like puddles of pee. So they just climb up here, eat their like peanuts or whatever. And they're just peeing here. It's gross. I might as well clean off the squirrels over here too. I'm gonna spray it down. So here's the peanut butter. It's more like chocolate powdered peanut butter. <laughs> so I got this here. I don't need that much it seems. So there you go. So it doesn't seem like I really need to tie it up because the second one that I had set up, I didn't tie it up. I just left it in the back of the, the trap and it worked. So I think I'm gonna try doing that again. And so yeah, I just have a ball <laughs> of peanut butter and some actual peanuts here. And now that the other squirrel has been able to get away with a few of them, uh, I think it knows that it could come here to get these peanuts. Uh, and so it's gonna come back. And so I'm definitely gonna catch it. So I'm gonna set up the traps again and then start cleaning up. So if I did wanted to relocate these squirrels, what I would have done is I would have to drive them about 25 miles away. That's the recommended mileage, I guess. I hear that you can do like 10, 15 miles, but for safekeeping, like 20 to 25 miles is a little bit better. Not a little bit, a lot better. <laughs> Oh, these were male squirrels anyways, so getting rid of male squirrels is not a bad idea. Okay, there you go. Dang, that's pretty hefty. They're pretty heavy for just for two of them. I like to tie it like this and then go like that, go inside out to kind of double layer it. Now I can tie it one more time and then you can layer it up again. This. So that's double layered, right? And now you can go like that. And that's triple layered now. See? And that's good. Now just toss it in the garbage. This one here, I have set up the system already. I'm gonna just take this bait here and just toss it in the back. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. There you go, it's sitting in the back now. There you go, and set it up like that. We're gonna set this one up also. There you go, it's all set up again now over here and we're good. So right in this area here, there's just a bunch of random scraps, trash. And get rid of all of this so that it looks clean somewhat. <laughs> Let me do like a before scan of it first. Oh, I keep hitting my head on that. So yeah, I have this styrofoam like container. I kind of want to melt this down with like acetone or something. But yeah, there's a bunch of trash. I'm gonna get rid of all of this. And then I'm gonna take a look at this in a little bit. Not sure how I want to break this down. This can be just thrown out like this, I think. I might be able to toss it. Yeah, I'll just do that. This area I actually used to use as a small fire pit. I put bricks up in a circle in this area and then I would use this to just get a fire going, like a bonfire going. But I think over time, I kind of just used this area just to throw out like trash and stuff. And then it just got worse and worse over time. There you go. And then I also use this to toss out all of the, like the chicken bedding and stuff like that. Like a lot of this stuff is just wood chips and stuff from the bedding from the chickens. And so this, all of this right here is really fertile. It's good. Like I can grow a lot of good stuff in here. All right, that's good. Things are moving along. We'll just leave this as that. I'm beginning to lose interest. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna pull this out real quick and check on it. I'm not sure how much work I'm going to do with this today, but we're at very least going to take a look at it. Oh my God, this looks filthy. Oh, it stinks too. Oh, oh yeah. Just look at that. 
yeah, it reeks. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Like, look at that. Like that stuff that you see there, right where my blurry finger is, right there, that stuff, that thing that's sticking out, that is beef tendon. And those were dried beef tendons that I were going, that I was going to like break apart and then turn into sinew. And I have my heat lamp there. Might be able to salvage it, but yeah, this reeks. Oh God, heat lamp looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, I might be able to salvage it. I just need to dry it out. Okay, very likely I'm going to need to slowly toss everything. Oh God. It's just rotten. Yeah. Cause this is beef tendon and it was dry beef tendon. And then now it's just sitting in this slush. Oh God, and it reeks. Uh, this is why I don't want to do this. <laughs> what is this? Oh, it's Raven's shoes. These are Raven's shoes. But I have another pair of shoes in the house, so it's not a big deal. Oh, so here is like a container of sesame oil. Okay. So this right here. matches. I wonder if it really is waterproof. Oh wow. It's still perfectly fine. Yeah. It, it is a little wet though. Yeah. So like the cotton is still wet. It's wet, but like the matches look fine. Ooh. And the striker too. The, these are the extra strikers. Let's see if I can get this match to start. These stormproof matches to start the striker out, pop it on here just like that oh it might be bad oh they they are wet and they're super soft see oh oh okay there was liquid in it yeah these are all soggy huh too bad yeah in a survival situation i'd be screwed if i found these what happened it doesn't look like the container is cracked or anything appear to have been sealed pretty well. Let me see. Yeah, it was sealed pretty well. I don't know what happened. Maybe, maybe water got in and seeped in because this was left out in the winter. Yeah, it must have like, their water must have gone into here, into the crack, and then the freeze and thaw cycles, water would get in. That may have been the issue. That might have been why that, that failed. That's a bummer though. <laughs> Looks like, this is like a bag of canned foods. Oh God, this reeks. Like moving this stuff around, reeks. I got ponzu sauce here. I don't know what this is. Oh, this is honey. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this is just a bunch of cans of food. Oh. I'm not going to salvage any of this. <laughs> it's too much work. I'm thinking the reason why everything is black though is because of acorns that might be in here. I'm gonna pull it off to the side and I'm gonna pour all this water out. But yeah, this does not smell good at all. Ah, it smells like rotting like meat and smells like sewage and poop. Ah, hopefully all the wood chips and stuff over here soaks it up dump it what is all this oh that's where it went this is a this is a leather bag that i bought a while back and i was looking for it what's in here oh my oh god these are my lithium ion batteries for this camera that i'm using right now these are batteries <laughs> yeah, these are definitely bad. And seeing out here in the snow, this thing is supposed to be brown and it's all black. Take a look at all the stuff that's inside. I've got a knife, a bunch of f canned foods. These are all no longer good anyways, because, oh, what's this? Oh, that's where it went. This is carbon steel. 
This is the knife steel that was sent to me. That's where it went. Here you go. Yeah, this is knife steel. Well, at least it's not corroded and all bad. It still looks good. Okay. This is another item. Oh, these are my, um, this is like the rubber ammo for my uh, self-defense uh, air handgun thingy. Oh, wow. This looks like a brand new bottle of organic amber agave. Look at it. It's brand new, but it's been sitting in here. Oh, it's gross. Oh. <laughs> I've got my Uberleben container thing here with a lighter and some tinder in here and some wax. Oh God. I wonder what caused this to look all black because I don't see anything in here that may have been the reason why all this is black. It could be all these canned foods, possibly. But that's really weird. Okay. Tossing everything like that. There you go. I'm going to spray it with water. Oh, no way. This is my bushcraft um, auger. This is my bushcraft scotch auger. Look at that. Wow. So that's where it was. <laughs> I'm finding everything that I've been looking for. Oh, my uh, deer, my deer antler. Holy crap, it's like all stained black now. I am so fascinated at what happened here. I'm not sure what happened. I do not know what caused this to turn all super black like this. That's insane. Look at this antler. It looks like amazing, actually. Like, that's so cool. See, look at that. That looks beautiful. Like, it used to be all white right here, or pale white. And it used to be brown and just, yeah, and it used to be white on the tips there. I am impressed. Camera doesn't want to focus on it anymore, but yeah, that's super cool. So yeah, I think I'm going to be done with this for today. I want to eat now. Let's make something to eat. I'm going to just leave this here and I'll touch on this tomorrow morning. I'll like clean the rest off and I'll just do little bits of more work around here. So yeah, today has been successful. This is so good. <laughs> Let's eat soft shell crawfish. Mmm, so good. Look at the soft shell crawfish. Isn't that awesome? But I gotta make a sauce for it first. All right, I have all the ingredients for my sauce here. Okay, I have all my ingredients for my sauce, but take a look at the crawfish. Ooh, ooh, it's dripping. Take a look at it. <laughs> Let me zoom in. Look at it. So it comes in this tray like this and it's all frozen. It comes frozen with a bunch of dry ice sitting on top of it, but I've been defrosting it throughout the day. There's this film on top that you just kind of peel off. Peel off this film. All of these crawfish. <laughs> The whole crawfish is essentially just the arms and part of its like underbelly sort of body with part of its head. The head has been pulled off, so you don't have the head, but then you do have the body. Now let me show you a close up of it. So there you go. Isn't that crazy? So like the claws are really, really soft, just like how soft shell crabs are. But these are just soft shell crawfish. Isn't that cool? And like the entire body and everything here is soft. The whole thing is soft. So when you cook this up, you should be able to eat it whole. So I have my air fryer here. It's being powered by the AC 200 Max from Blue Weddy. This is an extension sort of battery. It pretty much doubles its capacity. 
I have it all hooked up right now. This is a fully off-grid system, which is really, really cool. So Blue Eddy partnered up with me and sent these to me. They also sent me like some solar panels. This is right below right here. See, these solar panels are really, really cool. So during the day, the sun hits it. It pretty much just soaks in all of the solar power and energy, converts it, and then charges these two batteries right here, these two power stations. It's super, super cool. And so eventually I plan on getting this set up either on my shed and then using this as sort of like my off-grid system or I may end up using this system for my van and then having an off-grid system in my van. It'd be really cool. There you go. So this is able to power my air fryer which is really nice because a previous battery pack that I used didn't work. The coolest thing about this entire setup is it actually can power my washing machine and dryer. <laughs> so yeah what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and just pop them in. There you go. <laughs> Throw in one more here, right there. That's good. That looks good, don't it? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna set this up for about 10 minutes at 400 degrees. So 400 degrees for 10 minutes. It could probably go a little less than that. It could go for 400 degrees at like eight minutes or something but I want it a little bit more crunchy and crispier. So I still have a whole tray full of these, so I'm gonna save these for later. And I am going to make the sauce. And I encourage you to just pretty much use this as a base and then throw in whatever you'd like that you think would be good. Like I don't have a recipe. I just throw things together that I have on hand most of the time and then, and it just ends up being good because most of these ingredients is stuff that I like. So I have ponzu sauce, throw in a bunch here like this. I normally would actually throw in like some smoke like liquid smoke or something, but I don't have any right now. And I've got some soy sauce. And yes, this is actually soy sauce. It's not Maggie, which is that, um, that seasoning sauce or something. This literally says soy sauce on it. I don't know why people argued with me that this was not soy sauce at one point. And I've got some Worcestershire sauce, just a little bit. This is premium sesame oil, just a tiny bit for some nice smokiness. Yuzu extract for some acidity. And this is crunchy garlic with chili oil. Oh, that smells amazing. Use all of that. Mix all of this up to make it even better. Now throw in some MSG. This entire container is MSG. <laughs> there you go. Doesn't need a lot, just a pinch or two. And that's it. I just saw an Amazon truck go by. I'm gonna check to see if I got anything. Let's see. I don't think I have any deliveries. Oh, I do have a delivery. I'll be right back. Ah, uh, there you go. Yeah, I remember now. So this, this is um, snare wire that I bought. Oh, perfect. Ooh, oh, it's all broken. Yeah, like it's all broken, but that's fine. And then I have this here. I got two different gauge wire because I want to learn how to snare, be able to catch animals like passively. So this right here is probably 20 gauge and no wait, 24 gauge and this is 20 gauge. Yeah, because I, I remember buying 20 gauge and 24 gauge because that's, that's sort of the recommended like gauge wire that you would need for snaring. All right, let's get back to the main subject here, the sauce. I'm just gonna mix it up. Yeah, it should be good as is like this. Like, look at it, it looks amazing. <laughs> there you go. That looks good. Very good. See, I have to clap like that to match up and sync up the footage and the sound so that way I can edit it seamlessly. <laughs> We've got one minute left. We're almost done. <laughs> All right, let's try this though. Ooh, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> so, so good. Perfect. It probably could use some sort of sweetener, like, like sugar or maybe some honey, but I think this is fine. <laughs> Check this out. Look at how good that looks. Check this out, look. 
Look at that. That looks amazing. Pull it off. So here's one of them cooked. This is a Sashel crawfish cooked. Let's give it a try just by itself. <laughs> That's so good. Holy crap. Mmm. Wow. Yeah, it tastes just like crawfish, similar to shrimp. And the entire thing is edible. It's crunchy. It has a nice, like, natural sweetness. Oh my god, this is so good. Holy crap. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing. Let's try this one with some sauce. Just dip it in like that. Yeah, just completely drench it. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> oh man, this is so good. This is amazing. Yeah. <sighs> Sasha crawfish. You gotta try this. I need to eat some more. I need to eat some more. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. So if you've been watching up until now, I uh, really appreciate it. Thanks for just watching my videos. And please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And please smash that like button to show YouTube that you enjoy these type of videos and that way they'll show it to more people and I'll get more views and I'll make more money you know on YouTube and that's been the entire goal from the start of all of this like six seven years ago and I'm finally doing it and it's so cool and I'm getting cool merchandise like this you know from companies that are really really cool especially like Blue Eddy like I've been using their product for about five months now I've been using this for a very long time now. Like you guys saw this like months ago, like I made videos on it months ago, but they recently sent this top part here. This is like a portable power station. It's the same um, power as the one at the bottom. Like I think like the capacity is pretty much the same, but it has less inputs and it doesn't have an LCD screen like this. The top one is more for like portable devices and stuff. This bottom one here is good for electronics like this and charging like a laptop or using this as sort of like a backup generator almost. But it's solar powered. Uh, you can use like the panels to power this and it's really cool. The customer service has been great. Like I've been able to communicate with one of the rep back and forth and they're pretty prompt and they're really like nice and they're really cool. Um, I've worked with like Jackery in the past and I really, really like disliked work with, working with them. I had issues where they weren't going to pay me for the videos that I made for them. And they promised me to pay me and stuff. And it took me a while to get them to pay me. And like everything has been resolved, but I still have like this bad taste in my mouth with them, you know? So I don't want to work with Jackery anymore. Plus their products aren't that great compared to Blue Eddy. Like I've used both and I've looked up and researched both. Blue Eddy uses a different type of battery. I forget exactly what it's called. It's like LIPO4 or something like LiPo4. I don't quote me on it but like they use a different type of battery that's much more safer. Uh, Anchor also does the same thing. Anchor, uh, they're a pretty good brand as well for like portable batteries and stuff. And they've recently moved into this sort of scene where they're making like larger batteries like this as well. Uh, Anchor uses the same dial battery as Blue Eddy. Those batteries are not like lithium ion batteries that like heat up and then like expand or blow up, you know? That doesn't happen with these type of batteries. And then plus these batteries last much longer. They last like two, if not three times longer, maybe even four times longer than the lithium ion batteries that Jackery uses. Jackery 
uses a cheaper sort of more common battery and the life cycle of it doesn't last as long. And so just for transparency, Blue Weddy isn't paying me for the videos that I'm making. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show them that I can make videos for them and that I want to work with them. And so we're trying to set up something where I'm doing some sort of like month long campaign, you know, like for a couple of months or something, trying to figure something out with them. But right now they have just sent these products to me for free. So like I got these products for free to use them to test them and to talk about them, but I'm not getting paid uh, by Blue Eddy yet. And my goal is to get paid by them. And I wanna show them that I can make good content for them. And so, yeah, if you've been on the fence in buying a product like this, like Jackery, like Inker or Blue Eddy or any of the other brands that are out there that are selling like batteries, like like solar generators or whatever they're called, you know, like this is, I think they are calling these like power systems or something like that. Um, and so these power, or no, power stations. Yeah, so these power stations, um, they're nice, you know, it's cool to have. Um, and I've been able to power my PlayStation 4 and a monitor in the woods, play games and stuff like that, it's super cool. And so, so far, yeah, Blue Eddy has been a solid company and I've enjoyed using their products. Consider checking them out uh, whenever you have a chance. We've got four minutes left. <laughs> All right, done. Check that out. <laughs> so I have spent about four hours already from start to finish, from the beginning of this video till now. I started cleaning up the shed and doing all of this four hours ago. And then I'm gonna spend another like hour or two editing this video and then another hour like uploading. I spend so much time on these videos <laughs> and it's supposed to be like a quick vlog. But I hope you enjoy these videos because I do enjoy making them. I think I'm just gonna throw everything in. Yeah, I'm gonna throw everything in just like this, see? Then just toss it and get it like all in. Oh, yeah. Oh man, this is amazing. There you go. This camera is better. It could zoom in and get so much more detail. Like, look at that. Yeah, that's amazing. This camera is like amazing. Look how good that looks. Oh man, it's so good. Like, the moment it just hits my mouth, my mouth, like my mouth waters. Like, I barely could even talk because it's so like, I don't know, it's like super savory. <laughs> Holy crap, this is just absolutely amazing. Mmm, see? Like I'm salivating like so much. Hmm, this is insane. And I think most other people who get these probably would batter them and then deep fry them. I think that might be a good option also, but I don't like doing that. I don't like spending time with flour and like making batters and stuff like that and then deep frying stuff. I don't enjoy doing that stuff. So that's why you don't see me do a lot of that stuff. I would rather do it like this. <coughs> this has been a pretty successful day. Get to try this. We got some stuff like cleaned up, caught two squirrels, set up the traps again. So I should be getting two more squirrels, hopefully. And then all of that like trash and stuff that's sitting out there, I'm, I'm gonna pick it up and gonna sift through it, see what I can keep and what I should throw away. I still have this much left of the crawfish. I'm just gonna keep this in the fridge for like another day and probably eat the rest of them later. Well, before I end the video, I wanna show you one more thing that's kinda cool that I probably will film like really quickly tomorrow. This weekend, I'm gonna be pretty busy with my family and stuff and so, I'm, I might not be able to do my daily vlog. I really want to still do it. And so that's why I'm trying to like figure out what I can do for the days that I'm gonna be busy. And so, yeah, let me show you something really cool. So this right here is a 25 pound recurve bow. It's just a traditional bow. It has a sort of a, has an arrow knock or something right here. 
or arrow like rest. There you go, just like that. I haven't set this up completely yet. There's these pins that I have to attach here and then some fabric that I need to attach right here also. Uh, but let's just give it a shot. <laughs> and the cool thing is I have another bow here too. This one here has just like the riser like this and then it has attachable limbs, uh, which is this one right here. And this one is a 45 pound bow. And uh, yeah, this video has gone long enough. The rest of the video is just me just shooting at that target that I just got today. So yeah, let's uh, give this a shot. There you go. Oh, wow. That's so cool. This is a lot of fun. Now, so much easier on my joints and my arms because this is only a 25 pound bow. Oh, wow. That is very satisfying. <laughs> Aside from the one up here and the one up here, the grouping is not that bad, right? Looks pretty good. Oh. Yeah, three of them was pretty good right there. Hmm, not bad. I still gotta work on it. <laughs> All right, that's it for today's video. Hope you liked it. And I will see you tomorrow. And I think the topic of the video is probably going to be this. I'm going to show you my other bow and arrow that I just got. And we'll just test shoot it and have some fun. All right.